the speaker view and then just you. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning. Is this the way Ralph's got this thing set up in the front? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. That's usually where the chat is. We had tornado warnings out here. I'm no kidding. In Acton. Acton. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we just had a tornado warning up through air and it's moved on up through Chelmsford and now it's up in Lowell and it's going out to sea up that way. Oh, good. Yeah, we had... Went right over Art's house. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. It found him. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're good. Hey, there it is. That's better. Yeah, better for Got the chat in the right. Okay. Yeah. So we're, uh, looks like we're live on Facebook. Yep. There we go. That's, that's the usual right there. Doesn't look like a big crowd at church. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to the United Church of Christ Congregational in Boxborough. I am the Reverend Cindy Maybach, and I just wanted you to know how I fit in this neighborhood. My very first ministry ever was the interim minister of West Acton Baptist Church, and I remember the Reverend Dick Levitt being here as one of my early colleagues. 
And I'm so grateful now to know the Reverend Cindy Worthington Berry, who has served you so beautifully over 11 years. And I just want to offer you a blessing as a church that is so strong and faithful and grounded and your future is bright. So in these times of transition, hang tight. You have one another, you have the Lord. You are welcome here. Wherever you are on your journey, if it's your first visit on Zoom or on Facebook Live, or if you're watching even after Sunday, if you're gathered here in the sanctuary, you are welcome at UCC Congregational Boxboro as we gather together to worship our living God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Gloria, and what I'd like to do is uh, start with a call to worship this morning. Welcome to worship this day. Thank you. We're glad to be here. Lord, be with each one of us today. Feed our hearts and souls with your transforming love. Oh, excuse me. Well, anyway, some of you come seeking, some of you come struggling. Lord, be with each one. God is truly with you all today, guiding, lifting, feeding, and restoring your souls. Be to God who continually abides with us. Please join in. Uh, to uh, the gathering hymn, Lord, who is loved through humble service. Let's take a moment and think about what's been happening this past week in your life or what you're looking forward to. We're going to have a few moments of silent prayer where you say your own individual prayer, and then we'll followed by the Lord's Prayer.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our differences are many, and yet we are all part of this human family. Let us greet our brothers and sisters by saying, God's peace be with you. Good morning. Uh, what I'd like to do for you this morning is to tell you the gospel by heart. Uh, in the early church, uh, it, they didn't have Bibles they could pick up and hand around. There might have been some letters written in Greek that passed from church to church. But honestly, most of the stories about Jesus were just shared person to person, uh, one person to a group of people. And I'm bringing back that oral tradition in this practice of biblical storytelling. So um, I've got a nice long piece for you. Sit back and enjoy. This is from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, uh, beginning with verse 1 and going all the way to verse 42. And it goes like this. When Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard, Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John. Although it was not Jesus himself, but his disciples who were baptizing. Uh, Jesus left Judea and started back to Galilee. And he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar. Now, it was near the plot of ground that uh, Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Uh, Jacob's well was there, and tired out from his journey, Jesus was sitting at the well. It was, whew, it was about noon. Well, a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said, um, give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, yeah, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? And Jesus answered her, if, if you knew who it was who was asking you, give me a drink, if you knew the gift of God, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Hmm. The Samaritan woman said to him, sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get this living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well and with his sons and flocks drank from it? And Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this well, they'll be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I give, they will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become a spring of water within them, gushing up to eternal life. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty. 
or have to keep coming here to draw water? Jesus said to her, go call your husband. The woman said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying you have no husband because you've had, you've had five husbands. The one you have now, mm -mm, not your husband. What you have said is true. And the woman said to him, Sir, I see you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. And Jesus said to her, Woman, I tell you, the time is coming when you will worship neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Uh, you worship what you do not know. We worship what we know because salvation is from the jews but i tell you the hour is coming and is now here when those who worship true worshipers will worship in spirit and truth uh, and god seeks such as these to worship god god is spirit and the true worshipers will worship god in spirit and in truth and the woman said i know that the messiah is coming who is called the christ and when he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. And Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking to you. And just then, his disciples came back. And they were astonished because he was speaking with a woman. But none of them said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Well, she left her water jar and went back to the city and told the people, come and see a man who has told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? And the people left the city and they were on their way to him. Now, meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something, eat. And he said to them, I have food to eat that you don't know about. So the disciples said to one another, well, surely someone didn't bring him food to eat. And Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to complete their work. Now, do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how fields are ripe for harvesting and the reaper is already receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. And so the saying holds true, one sows, another reaps, but I sent you to reap for that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Well, many Samaritans in that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. And so when they came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And many more believed because of his word. And they said to the woman, we no longer believe because of what you said, for we have heard for ourselves. And we know we know this is truly the savior of the world. Here ends the telling of God's blessed word. Thanks be to God.
Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The anthem is later, right? Later. Okay, good. I don't want to make sure I wasn't stepping on music. <laughs> I love the music here. It's such a gift to be with you. Uh, well, I wanted to speak something about this crazy weather we're being having. I, I uh, was on 495 and the rain was torrential. And yet it's been kind of hot, hasn't it? And so I don't know if you have found relief from the heat by going in the ocean at the beach or by jumping in a pond or a lake, sitting by a river, a creek, catching a breeze, or maybe a pool in your backyard. Well, I have a pool in our condo development and when it was really beastly hot, I went to hang out in the pool. And this little girl came and she was speaking Romanian to her grandmother. And she was the only child in the pool until a couple of other kids came. Their dad brought them. And the little girl, maybe about seven, and she had this bathing costume with short sleeves covering her shoulders and leggings covering her knees and a hijab around her head to keep her hair tucked under. And she was speaking Arabic to her dad. And then a couple of African-American kids came with their white grandmother, and there was a young white couple, and she brought extra inner tubes so that all the kids could share. <laughs> and there was no arguing, and they were playing together and splashing and laughing. There was an elderly Jewish couple who came. Oh, and I'm the lesbian. <laughs> My wife and I were the lesbians in the group. And it was just like this moment on a hot summer day, looking around these people with different languages being spoken and different religious backgrounds and different ethnicities. It just seemed to me, this is the kingdom of God, right? This is the people of God. Uh, the view of the swimming pool in Wista. <laughs> so it was a lovely, lovely day and so good to cool off. You know, that Jesus mentions Samaritans at a number of different times in his teaching. And we think about the Good Samaritan, and, and uh, I wonder if we fail to catch the depth of history beneath it. So I just wanted to run through quickly for you who the Samaritans were. Way back in um, the 8th century before the Common Era, 722 BCE, the Assyrians swept in, and the southern Jewish folks in Judah held firm, but the ones in the north, they had a king who was more conciliatory, really didn't want a lot of war, really wanted peace, and so they figured out how to live with these oppressors. And there was a lot of intermarriage, the children started learning the local language, some of the uh, customs of the Assyrians got murkily into the Jewish uh, religious rituals, and that's just how things went in the northern kingdom of Israel in those days. It was 150 years later that the Babylonians came in, took everything over, and the southern Jews in Judah really suffered. And people were sent into exile. Uh, no one was allowed to speak Hebrew. No one was allowed to practice Judaism of any kind, and they wrecked the temple. It was a devastating time for those in the south and in the north, for all of those people. Well, then, uh, when the Persians took over in the 5th century, they were much more tolerant. And so people were allowed to speak Hebrew. People were allowed to bring back the stories of scripture. People were allowed to celebrate uh, Passover and all of those sacred you know, Yom Kippur and all of those sacred festivals. And there was news about rebuilding the temple. If you look in the Hebrew scriptures, Ezra and Nehemiah talk about this era in, in, in Jewish history. And the people were so excited to build the temple again. So people from the north came rushing to Jerusalem, rolling up their sleeves, ready to help. And the people in Jerusalem said, nope, no. You think you are going to help build this holy temple? 
You who married people who weren't of our religion, you who have somehow softened up on a lot of the traditions that we have, you are not welcome here. So after a while, the Samaritans built their own place of worship on Mount Gerizim. And in 129, before the Common Era, the Maccabees came, and there was a big revolt, and they tore that temple down. And those people were Jews, so it was the Jews who were now like saying, you can't build our temple. And now they were like knocking down the temple we built. 140 years later, Jesus shows up. So I just want you to know when we see Samaritan, it's not just a group. It's like the disciples having grown up in that era, they would have been taught by their parents and grandparents and grandparents, great grandparents that those Samaritans are really not good religious people. They don't go to our church. They aren't faithful like we are. It's them. And the Samaritans, of course, felt the same. So think about, and they were all Jewish. So think about the Catholics and Protestants in Ireland at the beginning of this century. Heck, just in the 1950s, right? Think about uh, the Sunnis and, Sh and, and Shiites in, in, the Is in the world of Islam. Th there's so many places and and religions and countries where our history has been so tangled up. And the story about Jesus and the woman at the well takes place in this kind of context. A rabbi who had just been hanging out with the Pharisees, mind you, he leaves the Pharisees, he wants to get back to Galilee, take a breath, but he has to go through Samaria, and now he's alone talking with a woman, not something religious leaders did in those days, and she's a Samaritan. Ew. <laughs> so, and, and, and the disciples, you know, they go into, they go into Sikar to, to get some food, and, and, um, you know, I was trying to imagine what that would be like today. So let's say you've run out of snacks and you run to Trader Joe's and one of your guests has a peanut allergy, right? So you go to the cookie aisle and there's no list of ingredients on the cookies, which is weird. So you go to the, uh, you know, one of the people working there and you say, so can you just tell me which one of these cookies has nuts in it? And they're like, I don't know. And then you say, well, I have someone who's really allergic to nuts. And they're like, I don't care. I mean, that must have been what it was like for the disciples to go shopping in Sikar. Like nobody was caring about the kind of kosher regulations that Jesus himself would have really, uh, as a rabbi, in, you know, working in Jerusalem would have demanded. So they come back finally with food that is acceptable and he hasn't eaten, they want him to eat, and he says, I have food to eat. And they're like, oh man, that Samaritan woman, she like gave him ham, <laughs> it's just not good. And Jesus begins, as Jesus often does in the Gospel of John, to speak metaphorically about the food that he has is following God's will, finishing God's work, and that the harvest is now here. So I'm struck by this story in terms of how it is that Jesus himself is moving beyond the cultural bounds of his time and dragging the disciples kicking and screaming with him. And I just wonder, the woman goes running to her city and says, oh, come and see the Messiah. And I wonder how we can do that in this day and time, in this place, in a way that honors who Jesus is and is respectful of the neighbors around us. So here's what I'm thinking. I am wondering if all that we do here on Sunday morning, all that we do in the UCC Boxborough and all of our other congregations, if it isn't simply the trappings of creating a time and space for people to receive that Christ gift that the Samaritan woman received, she was seen. No one in her community saw her for who she really was. Oh yeah, husband number six, not even a husband. 
Jesus saw her and loved her. He heard her story and loved her. He knew her and loved her. And is that not the point of our work in the church to bring to bear into every place, our workplace, our neighborhood, our family, our Zoom rooms, our Facebook posts everywhere we go to bring this sense of love so that people are feeling seen and heard and loved. Is that not the point? What if the point is not about getting more members in here? The stewardship committee just went, mm. <laughs> right? If someone is seeking a more meaningful life, it would be delightful to invite them to church or to Bible study or to uh, uh, the musical, the folk music group that you all have. Because everywhere UCC Congregational Boxborough is, you're creating a time and space for that Jesus love to be evident to any who are in need of that kind of being seen, being heard, being loved, being home with God. But we don't actually worship the church. We worship God in the church. And that's such a slippery little uh, uh, line to cross that we have renovated this gorgeous building and created all of this community and found so many different ways of serving, not only in Boxborough, but going out and doing mission. But it's all for the sake of meeting others in by that well to be seen and known and loved. In June, I had the opportunity to go to Ireland on a church choir trip. There were 24 of us, and we were on a bus, and we were traveling all around Ireland. And I didn't know everybody. There were a few people who had come from other kinds of places, not this one particular church. And there was a woman, Nadine, and I was asking her, do you go to a church? And she said to me, no, I, um, I practice my spirituality by playing with my dogs and by hiking in the Adirondack Mountains. And you know, Usually when someone says to me something like, well, I don't need church, I can worship outside. I want to say to them, but do you? <laughs> you know, there's like a Sabbath rhythm to what we do at church, where again and again we come to sing, to say prayers, to gather together. And there's a community that supports us because left to our own devices, I mean, it's great to worship God in the woods, but we get too busy, we don't have enough time. And I have this whole little uh, patter that I used to say, and in the end I'd invite people to church and I'd tell them what time and there's plenty of parking. and. It was almost like God said, shh, to me. And so I listened to her, and I didn't give my usual song and dance. I just listened to her. She worships, she expresses her spirituality, walking in the woods and playing with the dogs. I said, well, that's lovely. And I let it go. I wasn't doing the woman at the well come and see. What is wrong with me? But God told me to be quiet, and I was. So it was a great week. We were on a bus, and, and if you have been on a mission trip, or if you've chaperoned a youth work camp, or if you've been one of the mentors on a confirmation retreat, you know what I'm talking about in terms of how you gather together with such great friendship with all of the people on the trip. And we were eating together and riding a bus and seeing these beautiful sights. And the sun shone in Ireland, my friends. It was amazing. It was raining here, but it was sunny in Ireland. And we sang together. And, and, and those of you who sing know that as you gather together, there's a, a way that you sing and the breath is as one. And of course, part of that is because our choir director puts those breath marks in the music so you know where to breathe. But I was talking to a choir director uh, at Craigville Colloquy this week, and he told me that they've done studies of choirs, and when choirs sing together, the heartbeat becomes one. Everybody's heart beats at the same time. Isn't that amazing? 
So we had this lovely 10 days of singing together and living together and sightseeing together. And on the very last day, the choir director came to me and he said, you know, Cindy, I was talking to Nadine and, you know, the one with the dogs in the mountains. And she said, you know, Tom, I think something's missing in my life. He said, so when we get back to the States, I'm going to have some more conversations with her about how she might be able to fill that missing piece with the peace we know from Christ. My friends, let us not, let us find that truly authentic way of confessing our love in Jesus Christ by meeting every person in our community where they are and by hearing them and seeing who they are, accepting them and loving them and just being that Christ-like presence. We've moved beyond the days of, oh, everybody should come to our church because everybody else is damned. It just doesn't, that's just not who the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is so many religions and languages and ages and gender identities. And yet, Christ is the center of my life. And there is a love that he expresses that it offers salvation to wherever people are hurting, comfort to the grieving, healing to the sick, encouragement to the downhearted. And you and I have this blessing of singing praises, of gathering and worship in this hybrid space so that we can get a taste of that Jesus love. And all next week, listen to the stories of others. See the places and lives that may be broken and in need of solace and love. Sharing that love wherever we go, everywhere and always with our lives we say come and see come and see the lord i know amen
back here. Do we have prayer requests this morning to share with the community of faith? Yes. That's exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> we praise God for the mission trip and uh, for all of those who work together and the wonderful, not only the work being done, but the community that was gathered. Thank you for that celebration. Other prayer requests or celebrations or concerns? Yeah. My grandson, Wesley, celebrating his birthday. Wesley's six years old. Praise God for grandson's birthdays. Any others? Yes. I love how these synchronicities happen, and it's exactly what your service is. The, the song that Larry picked out, I'm sure he didn't work it out for you, but the text, if you go back and read it, is totally aligned with what your service is about. It's praise God for worship and for music directors and for uh, choirs and prayers and how all of that gets blended together by the Holy Spirit. Thank you for that. Music is such a gift. Any other prayer requests? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that celebration of my ministry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any others? Let us gather in prayer. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for your presence in our midst. We give you thanks for the joy of birthdays and the joy of music and the opportunity to gather together uh, as intergenerational family, uh, we ask your blessing on students who have no school this summer. And we ask your blessing on those who are seeking summer jobs. And we pray for those in summer camps. And we give you thanks for the extraordinary mission that happens and the community that is built around that. We give you thanks for the ministry and mission of UCC Congregational Boxborough and ask that you would bless us in all of the different ways we gather together virtually and in person. As we're a bit more scattered in the summer, you continue to hold us and gather us back. Thank you for shining your love on this particular congregation all of those decades ago in the past and in the future to come, we give you thanks that we have the opportunity to share together the love of Jesus, to know the laughter of church fellowship and to gather together to serve those in need and to cry out for justice for those who are oppressed. We thank you for calling us into this time and place in this moment of praise and thanksgiving. And we would ask you to place situations in our path this week that we might speak words of love and justice and comfort and that you might use our presence to bring your kingdom to bear. We pray all of this in the very precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. the opportunity to give as the Lord gave us God's Son and the power of the Spirit, and so we receive our offerings. Do we pass the plate or do we just drop them in on our way out? Our way out. All right. Also, 
So those of you who are online, there's a, a opportunity for you to give and you will notice that information in the chat and there's also gifts uh, plate for you to give as we leave. It's a real sacred opportunity for us as Christians to express our faith through generosity and let us bless those gifts that are to come uh, with our sung response. I would invite you to stand if that's comfortable for you as we sing, Come, O Fount of Every Blessing. My friends, I invite you to go forth from this place filled with the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the embrace of our comforting Holy Spirit. Bless you as you go forth into this world sharing the love of God. Amen. <laughs>